Uhuru. I'm Valerie Bronte of Uhuru Solidarity Movement, and this is the December 15th Solidarity Spear Study Live. I am here in the Newburgh, New York, Stewart International Airport. I'm about to fly to South Florida today. Um, I'm going to visit my mom, and then I'm going to volunteer with Uhuru Pies in St. Pete next weekend. So, And attend the uh, 50th anniversary um, of the Bernie Spear newspaper event that's taking place at Aquaba Hall at the Uhuru House, the historic Uhuru House in St. Petersburg. Um, if you can't be in St. Petersburg next weekend, then um, you should be organizing a viewing party of this, uh, it's gonna be an incredible presentation, of course, from uh, Chairman Amalia Chatella and uh, reviewing the, um, just the 50 years of victory of the um, voice of the African, International African Revolution is what we're going to do here on the study, just to get a little, get a little prepped, get a little pumped for um, just, this is a momentous and historic occasion. And I think it's just, you know, it's just really important that we recognize that the Burning Spear newspaper has been in publication without interruption since 1968. So I just wanna, first off, salute the leadership of Uhuru Solidarity Movement, which is the African People's Socialist Party. And I want to say Uhuru to everybody that's coming into the chat right now. Uhuru is a Swahili word that means freedom. And we are called upon the African People's, by the African People's Socialist Party to keep freedom on our minds 24 seven. And freedom, of course, being the liberation of African people and the continent of Africa, uh, the control of the continent of Africa and power and control over the lives for all African people and self-determination for all African people. So that is what we say, when, what is what we mean when we say Uhuru. So I wanna thank everybody who's joining the study today. I see um, folks from all over the country. I wanna say Uhuru to Jake Scott, Tuning in from Spoken, Washington. Uhuru, Virginia Wilson. Virginia Wilson is a Uhuru Solidarity Move Movement comrade from Louisville, Kentucky. Uhuru, Virginia. Uhuru, Betosh. Betosh is our USM comrade in the Bronx. Uhuru, Betosh. I'm going to be moving back to New York soon. I'll be seeing a lot more of Betosh. Thank you for sharing. Yes, please share this to your timeline. Share this to groups that you think would be interested in an anti-colonial, anti-imperialist um, discussion, political education today that we're gonna have. Um, I want to introduce myself again. I'm Valerie Bronte of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. And we, the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, are under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. We are the mass committee of the African People's Solidarity um, Committee. and uh, we have three principles of unity. African people have the right to lead their own struggle. We work in our own white communities to win material solidarity. I'm sorry, I just cut a little. Okay, sorry. We work under the leadership and are accountable to the African People's Socialist Party. That is our number one principle of unity. Number two principle of unity is African people have the right to lead their own struggle. And number three is that we organize in the white community for reparations. So um, that's a little bit about us. Um, so who is the African People's Socialist Party? Well, I wanna salute um, the leader and founder of the African People's Socialist Party, Chairman Amalia Shatella, founded on um, the African People's Socialist Party in 1972 was formed by the merger of three organizations, JOMO, the Junta of Militant Organizations, which um, uh, Chairman Omalia Shatella was uh, um, the leader leadership of that as well, as well as the Black Rights Fighters from Fort Myers, Florida, and the Black Study Group of Gainesville, Florida. And the African People's Socialist Party leads the struggle as the revolutionary vanguard of the African working class. And it leads the struggle for the African working class and all the oppressed masses against the United States, capitalist colonialist domination, against, um, against US imperialism, Western imperialism, and all the manifestations of colonial oppression and exploitation that we see across the globe. Um, the party recognizes that um, the oppression of African people within the U.S. is a domesticated colonialism. That African people were stolen 
from Africa um, with the first assault of Europe on Africa in the 1400s um, and through chattel slavery was stolen from Africa and then colonized within the, the, the borders of the um, illegitimately seized United Snakes. So um, the party recognizes that black people are not a race. They are a nation of people and their birthright is Africa. So the African People's Solidarity Committee is the organization of white people who are um, who unite with the overturning of imperialism and parasitic capitalism. We recognize as part of solidarity that we exist on a pedestal of stolen resources and stolen lives, terror and genocide that has been going on for six centuries. And that all of the comforts of our existence have come at the expense of the rest of the world. And we unite with the revolutionary demand of the African People's Socialist Party to pay reparations and organize in the white community, building the reparations movement, returning the stolen hoarded resources of capitalism to the African revolution. So I want to um, just say that the Burning Spear, first published by the Hunter Militant Organizations in 1968, is the voice of the African in, International African Revolution. And it is both print and online. And I just want to check my time real quick. All right. Uh -huh. I see that. Thank you. Uh -huh. Kev Kevers joined us. Yeah, so the Bernie Spear newspaper is not only print and online, but it's been published without interruption for now 50 years. So founded in 1968 by Jomo, and it's founded by Chairman Amalia Shatella, engages um, with the fear, everyday people. It's a, written for the voice, everyday people to engage around what the party is doing on the ground and theoretical analysis of African internationalism, which is the materialist political philosophy that was developed um, by Chairman Amalia Shatella. So our article today is going to be a living history of the Burning Spear newspaper from 1968 to 2018. It is by Omawala Keffing, um, a longtime African People's Socialist Party leader um, out of uh, Houston, Texas. And um, it's a little bit long and we're gonna have a shorter uh, Spear studies today than normal because I am in the airport and there were some contradictions in the airport. <laughs> so I'm not gonna be able to go all the way till seven. Um, uh -huh, yes, there is weird background noise at my location because I'm at the airport in the Quiznos and this is the best location that I, I could not get through security because there's nobody working. So I'm going to move my mic. I'm going to shelter my mic. I'm going to shelter my mic. That's what we'll do. Okay. So there is no online um, edition of this article yet. So you're going to have to get your Burning Spear subscription at burningspearmarketplace.com. Get your distributor pack there. And while you're there, um, you can also contribute to the Burning Spear Prisoner Fund, which sends um, the Burning Spear newspaper to um, incarcerated African people. Um, Okay, so we're going to start with this article by Omawala Keffing, the most accurate historical record of the international African liberation movement since 1968 without contradiction can only be found in the pages of the Burning Spear newspaper. The Spear has consistently told the story of the heroic fight back and organizational efforts of the African working class to free itself from white power colonialism and neocolonialism throughout the world. In 1968, Chairman Omalia Shatella, known then as Joan, Joe Waller, founded the newspaper in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Burning Spear newspaper was founded as the official news organ of the Junta of Militant Organizations, which developed as a revolutionary membership organization through the struggles of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, and the civil rights movements of the, in the southern states of the U.S. In 1972, the Burning Spear was adopted as the official news organ of the African People's Socialist Party at its founding, as JOMO was one of three groups that merged to create the party. Why the Burning Spear newspaper? 
the quest to create our own working class intellectual cadre and intelligentsia that comes directly from the ranks of the African working class has been a prime objective of the African People's Socialist Party since its inception. It was recognized early on that in order to compete with those oppressed to African freedom, with those opposed to African freedom, it was absolutely necessary to create our own media, thus the creation of the Burning Spear newspaper to contend in the arena of the war of ideas, the white bourgeoisie worldview versus the worldview of the African working class. The mission of the newspaper was to explain the world in order to change the world. Throughout its 50 year history, the Burning Spear newspaper has carried out this mission in a myriad of ways the many workings of the spear. One sure way to gauge or judge an organization's commitment to the revolutionary project is its documentation of what it wants, what it believes, its political work, and its position on major and minor political and military events in the world. In other words, its commitment to a political journal or newspaper. Do I need to say that again? <laughs> Um, the Burning Spear newspaper's first edition was done on memo, graphed letter-sized paper, but nevertheless, it was a newspaper and something to be proud of. The African working class had its own news organ, speaking to the, our people in our words. Despite what the white newspaper said about Jomo and our work, we had a newspaper of our own to contest them in the struggle of ideas. We had read and knew that Marcus Garvey and the Universal Negro Improvement Association used the Negro World newspaper to organize some 12 million Africans from throughout the world. We knew that Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam had built the Muhammad Speaks and was distributing 500,000 newspapers per week. We knew that the Black Panther Party and its newspaper, The Black Panther, were distributing some 100,000 newspapers per week among the oppressed and exploited African working class, the Africans the system had deemed incorrigible were reading the Black Panther and works by Chairman Mao and Franz Fernand. The absolute necessity for the African People's Socialist Party, this is page six, having its own news organ has been a priority from the beginning. The press must roll. We have printed this newspaper when there was no food on the table. We have printed this newspaper while ducking and dodging the landlord, the light, the gas, and the water people. This was our commitment to ensure that the people would be served and the revolutionary project would not be altogether silenced. We were and are intent on completing the Black Revolution of the 60s. The records that are inside the pages of the Spear are stories, chronicles, analysis, opinions, photojournalism, and just general documentation that enables us to more scientifically present the African working class, a worldview that informs our aspirations for self-determination and socialist democracy. The Burning Spear newspaper versus social media. Here we are today. In the opinion of the Spear editorial board, which is the central committee of the African people, Socialist Party. The question is not the spear versus social media. We are, we of the burning spear are African international, subscribe to no aspects of American exceptionalism. So when we hear the argument that nobody reads newspapers because everybody is on social media, we know that opinion is ill-informed. As African internationalists, we understand that most Africans in this world that constitute the African nation do not have access to the internet. We know that millions are locked down in U.S. prisons, do not have access to the, U the internet. The whole African nation, however, has access to the Bernie Spear newspaper and that it can travel throughout our communities, including our prisons, until the ink fades away as it teaches valuable lessons and serves to keep the revolutionary trajectory of the worldwide black revolution on track. We also recognize the significance of social media. In this regard, there is the burningspear.com, the online version of the Burning Spear newspaper. Every social media app or outlet that is available online is being used by the Burning Spear social media team. So there really isn't social media versus the spear. The spear as a stable tactical en entity or tool of the party and revolution. In the African People's Socialist Party, there is no work that is more important than for cadre to sell the spear on the streets. 
selling the spears should be scheduled into the party members' things to do today list. It is the primary organizing tool of the African People's Socialist Party and has been since its inception. And it is the thing that keeps us before and in touch with the African working class masses on the job, in the housing projects, on the street corner, and everywhere else the class might be. It holds us accountable to the people. In every issue, we print the party rules of discipline on our 14-point platform, what we believe, what we want, what we believe. The Spear introduces the masses to revolutionary thought and action. The Burning Spear newspaper is what keeps the entire Uhuru movement cohesive, glued together, and on the same trajectory. The International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, Impedum, the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project, APDEP, the African National Women's Organization, ANWO, the African People's Education and Defense Fund, APEDF, the African People's Solidarity Movement, and the Uhuru Solidarity Movement are all informed of each other through the pages of the Burning Spear newspaper. The work of the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace, and Reparations and other movement activities can be found in the pages of the Spear a long and glorious history. Although not easy and not without state interventions, we have nevertheless forwarded the aims and goals of the spear. On one occasion in 1976, the paper was sabotaged at the printer because a page consisted of an African man bent over using the US flag as toilet paper with the caption, a bicentennial salute, 1976. Most of you weren't even born yet. The paper came back with the page black and the printer refusing to print the paper. On another occasion, immediately following the more than 900 Africans murdered in Jonestown, Guyana, the initial story in the spear came back so jumbled from paragraph to paragraph that it was incoherent. The party had made the cor only a correct analysis of the Jonestown murders that I have seen up to date, but we persevered. In the early spear, you can find the party fight off the death penalty in Florida by waging a successful campaign to free Pitts and Lee, two Africans railroaded to death row in the late 60s. In the pages of the spear, the international struggle led by the party to free Desi Woods and smash colonial violence brought the Black Liberation Movement back to life from the crushing military defeat through COINTELPRO. The exposure of the massive prison system and the captured political prisoners and prisoners of war through the concentrated years of struggle to build the African National Prison Organization happened from the mid-70s through 1980. Sundiata Akoli, Asada Shakur, Herman Bell, Anthony Bottom and other captured African patriots were kept before the public through the pages of the spear. The slaughter of the seven members of Nelson Johnson's Communist Workers Party, including Sandy Smith, Johnson's wife, at a Dare the Klan rally in Greensboro, North Carolina in November of 1979. This story is told and put into the perspective in the pages of the Burning Spear newspaper. The move bombing in Philadelphia on May 13th, 1985 is chronicled in the pages of the spear. This and testimony at the World Tribunal can be found inside the spear. The electoral campaign to run Al Alvalida Donaldson for city council in the early 80s, the struggle of the Tampa Bay Four, the mobilizations against the police murder of Willie Big Man Daniels by St. Pete cop Leonard Leedy, and taking up the struggles of the nurses in nursing homes of St. Petersburg are all in the pages of the spear. Recent struggles for Justice for Tyrone Lewis and the Three Drowned Black Girls can be found in our newspaper. The big time land reform struggle in Oakland, California, known as Measure O on the ballot, which reached a revolutionary pitch and the struggle against the death penalty to free Freddie Roberts brought the entire city of Oakland back to political life that had not been seen since the Panther days. And it's all in the spear. The exposure of Jesse Jackson and a host of others as bootlicking boot sellouts during Jackson's run for the Democratic Party nomination in 1984 is chronicled inside the spear. We said in 1984, no confidence in the U.S. government, male or female, black or white, Republican or Democratic. We said it with Barack Obama and we say it now. The FBI firing mass murders at the Davidian compound in Waco, Texas, under Bill Clinton's leadership, is explained in the spear. 
the invasion and toppling the new jewel movement government and the murder of Maurice Bishop and the invasion of Lebanon by U.S. President Ronald Wilson Reagan, the heroic struggles of the Vietnamese, the Chinese revolution and the fight for communist integrity in China can all be found in the pages of the spear. The struggles of Africans in Mozambique, Angola, and Guinea-Bissau against Portuguese colonialism can be found with analysis in the pages of the spear. In addition, the assassination of Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso and the anti-settler colonial struggle against murderous Rhodesian regime by ZANU in then-occupied Zimbabwe is here as well. The struggle in occupied Azania, South Africa. Perhaps more pages of the spear have been devoted to the Azanian front of the African Revolution than any other front outside the U.S. Since 1976, the Soweto uprisings and the mass murder of our children and young people there, the struggle against inside occupied Azania has been a mainstay in the pages of the spear. From our ideological and material support of the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania to our consistent exposing of Nelson Mandela, Bishop Desmond Tutu, and the African National Congress and neo colonial sellouts. If one wants to know why the situation is as it is today in occupied Azania, you look to the Burning Spear newspaper. On one occasion during the height of the Free Mandela movement, Bishop Tutu thought he could come into Oakland, California, where the party was based and drink wine and dine with the white corporate executives of the Kaiser and Clorox corporations who were stealing from Africans right there in Oakland. Tutu was met with the militancy of the African working class who had come out in force to block any collusion between the neo-colonialists and the white ruling class. Tutu was in town to assure the corporations that Mandela and the ANC just wanted a piece of the African bounty. That dinner party was blocked, and you can read about it in the spear. The ongoing development of African internationalism, perhaps the Spears' greatest contribution to the party and the African revolution is it the role that it played in giving Chairman Omalia Shatella a forum in every issue to develop a liberating worldview of revolutionary African internationalism, the theory of the African working class. Through the point of the spear, a permanent column in every issue of the spear, Chairman Omalia Shatella has consistently answered the lingering theoretical questions confronting the movement through actual on the streets with the people practice of the African revolution. Chairman O'Malley brought the science that defined colonialism and taught the masses and the movement the struggle is for power and not a struggle against elusive racism. Above all, Chairman O'Malley, through the point of the spear, has defined the African nation and exposed the treacherous African petty bourgeoisie and neocolonialism. And we'll give the last word on this spear anniversary to statement to a comrade who knew the importance of the party and its newspaper, Comrade Huey P. Newton, had this to say in 1986 at a rally to free Freddie Lee Roberts at the Uhuru House in Oakland, California. Huey said, you might not have the Black Panther newspaper, but you have the burning spear. So they haven't done anything by crushing one organization. Long live the burning spear. And I just want to show you these really awesome photos. So these are various campaigns. I mean, so like, it's just. There's the chairman and Huey P. Newton. This is the Southern Regional Representatives, Kobina Batushengo, selling the spear. You can't really see that, unfortunately. And there's Kobina and Comrade Temba Shibanda, who are top spear sellers. And Comrade Kunde Baji Kikai, selling the burning spear in Huntsville, Alabama. Comrade Chianizu Luzolu, selling the spear in Houston. I accidentally hit something. I need to hide this current comment. Arr. All right. So here is the chairman with um, Omawale Keffing, long time um, party, party member, organizer, and political editor of the Burning Spear newspaper. 
So as you can see, like, let's just take a moment and just salute the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. Um, without whose leadership, without African internationalism, white people would never be able to come to these conclusions on our own. And as you can see, like, from the party's history, from the history of the chairman's leadership in the African International African Revolution, um, African internationalism has informed even the worldview of white people, even white people are now uniting with African internationalism and understanding that the only anti-imperial, anti-colonial struggle that can be waged has to start with the liberation of African people and, and the return of the stolen hoarded resources. So, you know, this is just an incredible article. I really want to salute you know, comrade and, uh, you know, political editor of the Bernie Spear newspaper, Omoala Kefing. This is a, um, just a tremendous history to be able to like even summarize. And this, yeah, this summation is incredible because as you can see, the party has been the vanguard leadership at every step of the way since COINTELPRO crushed the black revolution of the 1960s. The party has, been that continuous line from Marcus Garvey and the United Negro Improvement Association to today, to this moment. And as white people, like we need to be able to like understand like how tremendous an opportunity that we have to be a part of the str strategy. The only principled way for us to really be a part of any strategy to overturn colonialism and imperialism is to be under the leadership of the African working class. And Every single, you know, and, and just even the solidarity movement itself owes so much to the spear because if it wasn't for the rallying to free Desi Woods, the super powerful campaign to smash colonial violence and free Desi Woods, white women, you know, white women had were one to reparations. White white people were one to reparations. The African People's Solidarity Committee was formed out of that organization out of you know with the just the the clear concise scientific analysis that the chairman brings to current events and you know the chairman has a sunday study at 8 a.m that live streams on facebook and youtube and the study topic two weeks ago was you know you know there are many people in our organization and they have a very recent history of events like uh, uh, as far as historical understanding we have a recent history of 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 events um many of us may have you know especially from the the white community like you know we may have come into our political understanding that police violence was unconscionable, that the six centuries of colonialism has, you know, just wreaked abs absolute terror on the world. We may have come to our political consciousness um, through the recent events of police violence. But as you can see, nothing has changed. Nothing is new. Just because you have a smartphone in your hand, just because we have live stream capability and social media doesn't mean that you know, we're seeing some, you know, we're experiencing some like, you know, revelation or a conscious moment, the struggle for, of African people for self-determination and liberation worldwide has been ongoing and has been, you know, just relentless. And the party has been there every single step of the way. And that is what is just so tremendous about the leadership of the Solidarity Movement is that we're under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. Our political education is informed by African internationalism, which is like the most like easy. It's it's like it's just the easiest the easiest positions that you could possibly defend because it's it's completely. It's, it's just irrefutable. It's irrefutable. We all understand that capitalism um, required a primitive capital. And that was what, um, the reason that we understand that is because um, Chairman Omalia Chatella was able to, to bring that statement from Marx into proper context by not, not seeing 
chattel slavery as some sort of, you know, footnote of history, but in fact, the actual root of all the entire global economy today, the entire global economy today, the entire parasitic capitalist global economy was built from the assault on Africa and African resources and to this day continues to be. So when we're talking about 50 years of the Bernie Spear newspaper, we're also talking about six centuries of colonial terror against African people and indigenous people. And it's just tremendous to have this opportunity to get on the right side of history and organize in the white community, be this, be this inside the belly of the beast, be this agitator, be this organizer saying, we don't want, we reject, we reject. We reject white nationalism. We reject U.S. imperialism raining bombs down on people, fueling fueling jet planes so that they can de destroy food shipment coming into Yemen. We reject that as a Hrus Solidarity Movement. We reject um, the fact, we reject a reality and being complicit in a reality, being complicit in a society that, society that would allow Centoya Brown, 16 years old, um, who killed her sex trafficking um, abuser in self-defense to be sentenced to 51 years in prison. We reject that reality. That is not how things have to be. The, the reason that things are this way, and we understand this because we study the Burning Spear newspaper. You know, people post whatever they want on social media all the time. We're constantly sharing articles from the, you know, mainstream media and white bourgeois newspapers. And what is missing from any of those analyses? Like, you know, people talk, want to talk about fake news. They want to talk about gossip and rumors. They want to talk about lies. But what's missing from all of those articles that people share from the Washington Post and the New York Times is any political demand, is any revolutionary demand, is, is any direction, any indexical feature that might suggest that there's a better world possible? And that is summed up in every single article of the Burning Spear, exactly what the contradiction is, that the root contradiction of every single, you know, atrocity that we see play out on the news is summed up in the Burning Spear with a political analysis, with a revolutionary understanding with a next step, a direction to take, with an understanding of what the root contradiction is, and it is colonialism. It is white power colonialism. It is parasitic capitalism that was born of that opportunity. So I want to say um, a hoot to everyone who's just joined. We just had a very long article. Um, it was super, super powerful, but I did take up a lot of time. So I do want to check back in with everybody who is watching. Uhuru Paula from Arizona. Thank you for sharing, Paula. Yes, please share this to your timeline. Uhuru John Hill Jr., WBAI.org, great radio station in New York. I want to unite with uh, what the comment Virginia had just put out here incredible history of the spirit. I mean, tremendous history of the spear because the party is the in, undisputed, undisputed, indisputable vanguard, the advanced detachment of the African working class. I want to say Uhuru to Tama Goldberg Gadini from St. Pete. Thank you for tuning in today. So yeah, I mean, as you can see, the, just this, we could talk about this article for an entire month and it would be incredible. But yeah, regardless of what has, what anything else that happens in our lives, you know, the spear must the press must roll the spear must be sold the spear must be read especially for all of us in solidarity we have to sell the spear we have to advance the african revolution into the white community somehow and how are we going to do it with the ideas in our heads we have to understand the worldview of the african working class in order to effectively organize so if you're not out there selling the spear, if you're not studying the spear, if you don't have a spear subscription, if you don't have a distributor pack coming to your house every month, I don't know how else you're receiving your political education. You're receiving your political education quite possibly from 
white bourgeoisie. And that is never going to inform you of the correct trajectory that we need to take as humans, as white people who want to rejoin humanity. That will never inform you of that. The New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, all of that, all of that exists on the pedestal of colonial oppression and it upholds colonial oppression. That is the whole point of it. Those are capitalist organizations that are concerned with advertising revenue and, you know, and hot takes and the 24 hour news cycle. That is not the political analysis that you have the opportunity to um, study in the Bernie Spear. So this is why we have those Solidarity Spear study every week. We have the Solidarity Spear study every week because as white people, like, of course, the worldview that's expressed by the major media organizations is going to uphold the, that, you know, colonialism's in the past and exploitation's in the past. And, you know, you'll even have, you know, deliberately anti-scientific and deliberate lies posted, uh, uh, printed in, major, major news outlets denying climate change, denying, um, denying um, United States involvement in, uh, in terroristic campaigns against sovereign nations. You know, what we call U.S. imperialism, um, you know, gets fed to the viewers of Fox News as fighting for freedom, but they're not fighting for freedom. You're sending, you're encouraging people to send their sons over to to the Middle East so they can die for Halliburton, so they can die for uh, George Herbert Walker Bush's uh, bank account. So that's the world that we seek to overturn. That's the world that we reject as members of the Haru Solidarity Movement. We reject that worldview. We want to see colonialism in its grave. We want to see imperialism in its grave. We don't want to sit here and ha see the entire world have to suffer so that, you know, we can just go about our lives and not have to take responsibility for this hideous legacy of slavery. That's just not going to, that's not going to be the case. And we see that because African and colonized people are rising up all over the world and they are coming to take their shit back get a jump on it get a jump on it people that's that's what we're that's that is what this organization exists to do is to advance the african revolution into the white community and the revolutionary demand for reparations which are owed which are due and which are being paid which are being paid by the Uru solidarity movement and the African People's Solidarity Committee every every day, every single day. So the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, you know, we're practical revolutionaries because we're under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. And so we have a goal every week with the Solidarity Spear Study to raise $75, which we return as resources to the Black Power Blueprint, which are um, part of the just 26 different Organiza um, institutions for economic development and self-determination that are under the leadership of the deputy chair of the African People's Socialist Party, um, Ona Zenea Shetela. I just want to salute deputy chair Ona Zenea Shetela, who has been just doing tremendous work um, with the Black Power Blueprint, which has been on the ground in St. Louis, North St. Louis, the um, O'Fallon neighborhood um, since 2017 building a community center, the Aquaba Hall Uhuru House was opened April of 2018, the, just last spring after seven months of Blitzkrieg re renovations in which the entire community came together to volunteer and make that a reality. And that's a beautiful, beautiful, positive vision of a future that could be in every single city. We wouldn't have to see, we wouldn't have to see the African working class suffering in every single city in America, which we do today. And why are they suffering? Because all of the resources have been ripped out of their communities and put into the suburbs, have been hoarded and kept from them. So all of the work, all of, you know, these people who own their own houses, having their houses taken from them because there's no economic opportunities that continue to exist. And then in the 1970s, you know, returning from Vietnam, we just had a, a wave, just a tsunami of heroin unleashed by 
by the by the United States government in collusion with the cops and the Italian mafia. All you know, just in, if the heroin wasn't enough, then by the 1980s, the CIA was was selling its uh, its ill-begotten gains of cocaine from Central America, where it's destabilizing governments, selling in Oakland, you know, creating crack. Nobody created crack in in the black community. Crack was created by scientists. Why would someone why would someone ever look at a product that's pure and then come up with some sort of like chemical way to like make it it's, it's whatever. I'm not a scientist and I'm not a crack user, so I can't really speak authoritatively on crack. Um, but what I can say is that everything that we have seen in the last century, in the last hundred years, um, has you have received two versions of this information or you have received one version of this information from the mainstream media whose job it is to uphold white power imperialism. And for 50 years, the Bernie Spear newspaper has been informing the international African revolution. So I just wanted to say in salute to the Bernie Spears, absolutely fantastic, victorious legacy of political education and political analysis, bringing African internationalism to all corners of the world. I mean, the Bernie Spear is translated into French, um, has French articles all the time. I need to see today the the resources, um, the resources that we have in the white community, the ill-begotten gains of colonialism, the they form an economic basis of oppression. And what we do every week as part of the Solidarity Spear Study is we recognize that the resources that we have control over need to form an economic basis of liberation. So we're going to shift, we're going to reverse the flow of resources to, from parasitic capitalism to the African liberation movement, to the African revolution. And that is a positive vision that everybody needs to unite with because it is a matter of self-defense at this point. It is a matter of self-defense. We just, we don't have time left. Children born today won't live to see 60 won't live to see 60. We don't have the resources because of what parasitic capitalism has done. So we have to overturn as urgently as possible as much resources as we can to form an economic basis because as the chairman has taught us, the economic and the political are one. And what is the political? The political is the power. The power and the resources are one. The economic and the political are one. So for today's $75 goal, Please put your pledge in the comments. The resources go to the Black Power Blueprint, but do not. Now, we want to use the Uru Solidarity Movement. It's it's very tricky to just have the have the pledges go in directly there. We have to keep the revenue streams accountable and easy to document. So I'm going to need the moderator to take that comment down. The resources go to the Black Power Blueprint Project, but please make your pledges and then go and fulfill your pledges at ahurusolidarity.org. It's going to the same place, but we keep everything very organized and accountable. And so in order to do that, I'm asking you to go to ahurusolidarity.org. I'm just gonna check to make sure that comment went in. But we have a contest coming up for, well, it's actually, it's already begun. It is the December spear selling contest. So after you make your pledge, if you're gonna be in one place, if you're gonna be, I'm gonna be selling the spear on New Year's Eve day in New York City. But if you're gonna be in one place and you have your spears with you, this is how we win white people. This is, you know, if you're, if you have a table, if you're doing any sort of like, if you're talking to anybody, I was, it was 4 a.m. I had this hellish flight. I was talking to this woman about why I was there. And I had spent time with her at four in the morning talking about the Uhuru Pies campaign and the Black Power Blueprint. And I didn't have my spears with me. And I could have sold her a spear right there. You could sell a spear right now. I could sell spear right now in this airport 
And so that is the next step. This is the call to action is to join the December spear selling competition. And that is the next step because the first step is to put your pledge in the comments because we're going to raise $75 in this study to the Black Power Blueprint. All right, let me go and read the comments. Comrade Kristen from Spoken, Washington. I want to return $10 to the study. I'm so thankful to the African People's Socialist Party and Chairman Amalia Shetela for providing the solution to overturn this vile economic and social system and putting African internationalism out to the world. Ooh, that is very, very powerful. Thank you so much, Kristen. Evan Garner, tuning in from Asheville, North Carolina. The urgency is critical. I can return $10 in st stolen hoarded resources. Uhuru, Evan, that's exactly what I'm talking about, is that we need to back up, you know, go on, go on Facebook right now, or you, many people who, who, uh, who have uh, carved out a specific uh, autonomous zone of Facebook, they think, called Left Book. Left Book. No, no end in sight to political analysis that Chairman Amalia Shetela basically spearheaded and created and developed and defined. Paul Webb, who, who is credited with exposing the CIA drug trafficking in, in Oakland, California, Chairman Amalia Shetela put him onto that. Paul Webb didn't come to those conclusions on his own. Only the African working class can lead the revolution against parasitic capitalism and U.S. imperialism. Only the African working class, whose labor and resources have been stolen and hoarded, can lead the international African revolution. Uhuru, I will return $10 and keep the burning spear burning. Uhuru, Johan. Johan is our fantastic moderator. I have had such a great time um, bringing, uh, uh, working with Johan on developing how we're going to build the burning spear in the next year. The, so build the burning spear, solidarity spear study live programming in the next year, because it's just so important that we build this study, not only for the members of Uhuru Solidarity Movement, but to be on social media to expand to YouTube, to bring the African re revolution into the white community everywhere. And that is what we are going to do in 2019. And so I wanna salute Johan for all of his incredible effort over the last last week and helping, helping to like realize that vision in a absolutely beautiful plan of action that I'm excited. I'm really, really excited that we're gonna carry out. Uhuru, Jeanette Cruz. I returned $20 to the study. Deep appreciation, Comrade Jeanette Cruz. That is fantastic. So now we're at $50. We have raised $50 in resources that will go towards the Black Power Blueprint. And so let me talk a little bit about the Black Power Blueprint. The Black Power Blueprint is an economic development project of the African People's Education and Defense Fund, which is a nonprofit organization that um, that is uh, in St. Louis, Missouri right now. So it is building a community center, it is building two community gardens, um, a bunch of beautiful fruit trees were planted in the spring. Um, the space has been, the space had to be cleared of two uh, derelict dilap dilapidated buildings. And so that has already taken place. The next phase right now is going to be um, installing lighting and installing pavement around the um, the outdoor venue, which is on the side of the of of, of the community garden. And then in 2019, the big campaign will be to renovate this beautiful space on Goodfellow Boulevard for the Hurujiko Community Commercial Kitchen and African Independence Workplace Training uh, Workforce Training um, Program 
And so that will also then be the flagship location and home to Uhuru Foods and Pies in St. Louis. So Uhuru Foods and Pies, which has been bringing amazing baked goods, supporting African self-determination and, um, and economic developments for the last, I don't know, four decades, will now have a permanent home um, in St. Louis, Missouri as well. So this, this uh, last month and this month, I've been talking a lot about Uhuru Pies because the pie campaign is going on and Uhuru Pies is hoping to sell 10,000 pies for Black Power Blueprint. So December 20th through the 24th, you can pick those up in Oakland and St. Petersburg. And I just have some announcements. Um, we definitely want to remind everyone, sorry, hold on. I want to remind everyone not only about the pie campaign that is still ongoing and the spear competition, which has been extended through uh, January 7th because there was a delay in shipping because when uh, George H.W. Bush died, they had to uh, shut down um, the post office. Um, next Saturday, there will not be a Solidarity Spear Study Live because I will be in St. Pete for the Burning Spear newspaper 50th anniversary. I'm really excited about that. There will be an interview with Chairman Amalia Chatella. It will be live 6 p.m. Eastern. So watch in person or online, our host of viewing party. And then we have upcoming meetings so that you can join a Hru Solidarity Movement and get involved. And um, that is going to be uh, December 17th at 1 p.m. in Philly. There's a meeting and then ongoing meetings are Mondays, 6.30 to 8 in Boston, the Boston Public Library. Mondays, 6 p.m. at Lemp, neighbor, Lemp Neighborhood Art Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Mondays, 6 p.m. Um, in Panera Community Room. Um, and that's the open meeting for St. Pete, Florida. Fridays at 11 a.m., there is a national committee meeting to build the 2019 USM Convention, which will be held in St. Louis at the Aquaba Hall at Uhuru House, April 14th and 15th. And so don't forget about that. Tune in the next Saturday, Saturday the 29th. We'll be returning with the Spear Study Live. And then Sundays, this Sunday at 8 a.m., and every Sunday at 8 a.m., Omali taught me political study with Chairman Omali Ishtali. You can watch that live on Facebook, YouTube, or listen to it on Black Power 96.3 FM radio, another institution of the African People's Socialist Party. So I want to salute everyone who turned to the study and returned resources today. Um, this is just an important conversation. We have to, we have to convince, we have to convince our friends and family. Everybody that we love, we have to bring all of them with us in, in, into this work, into this work. It is so essential. It is so important. I look around and I have friends and it's holiday times and they have little kids and stuff like that. And yeah, all that stuff's really great and cute. And I want to believe in it too. But guess what? It can't happen. It's not real. You know, Santa doesn't come to Africa. Santa doesn't come to poor children. And Jesus doesn't come either. And you want, you want to know why? Same reason. Just fiction. It's just fiction invented by white people to justify their privilege, justify the hideous legacy of colonial violence that we have perpetrated against every single person on this planet, outside of Europe, even within Europe. In fact, within the white community, we're all suffering because of parasitic capitalism and imperialism. You know, there's not there's not one single person that is safe. There's not one single person that is safe. Everybody will have to reckon with what the system has done. And we want to be on the right side of history when that happens. So I want to say thank you to everyone. I have to close the study down early. Um, we are $25 short of our goal. Um, so we've only raised $50, but I do want to salute Jeanette and Johan and Evan and Kristen for returning resources. And the $25, if somebody would like to make that, that would be great. Just make sure to go to rusolidarity.org when you pay reparations. Just put in the note that it's for the Spear Study. Salute, comrades. And uh, I'm just waiting for the messages all to go up because I have to go and get in line and check in for my flight. Thank you.
Oh no. Okay. I have to go. Thank you.